Dear brothers and sisters of our Lord Jesus Christ, on this day the church begins a holy season of prayerful and penitential reflection. Our attention is especially directed to the holy sufferings and death of our Lord Jesus Christ. From ancient times, the season of Lent has been kept as a time of special devotion, of self-denial and humble repentance, born of a faithful heart that dwells confidently on his word and draws from it life and hope. Let us pray that our dear Father in heaven, for the sake of his beloved Son, and in the power of his Holy Spirit, might richly bless this Lenten tide for us, so that we may come to the Easter feast with glad hearts and keep the feast in sincerity and in truth. This is where if we had kneelers in our pews, we would be uh, using them to pray. Um, I'm going to pray at the communion rail. Anybody who would like to come up and pray at the communion rail and kneel is welcome to do that. Otherwise, you may either sit or stand for the litany of prayer. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, hear us. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us. Spare us, O Lord. Be gracious to us. Help us, O Lord. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Help, Help us, Lord. Lord. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, Help us, Lord. We poor sinners implore you to, to hear us, Lord. Lord. To prosper the preaching of your word, to bless our prayer and meditation, to strengthen and preserve us in the true faith, and to give heart to our sorrow and strength to our repentance. We, we implore you to hear us, the Lord. To draw all to yourself, to bless those who are instructed in the faith, to watch over and console the poor, the sick, the distressed, the lonely, the forsaken, the abandoned, and all who call stand in need of our prayers. To give abundant blessing to all works of mercy, and to have mercy on us all. We, we implore, implore you to, to hear us, good Lord. To turn our hearts to you, to turn the hearts of our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, we graciously and graciously to hear our prayers. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God. We implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord. Have mercy, O Christ. Have mercy, O Lord. Have mercy, Amen. O God, you desire not the death of sinners, but rather that they turn from their wickedness and live. We implore you to have compassion on the frailty of our mortal nature, for we acknowledge that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. Mercifully pardon our sins, that we may obtain the promises you have laid up for those are repentant. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Those who wish to receive the sign of repentance, the ashes on your forehead, please come forward. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
dust. stand as we sing him 610 Lord Jesus thank God
therefore announce to you the forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord.
Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapters 5 and 6. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Working together with him, then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in a favorable time I listened to you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, by great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand as we sing the verse for life.
Please be seated as we sing hymn 346, When All the World Was Heard.
how marked up would we be? What pictures would we see in the mirror? Maybe the face of somebody that we've hurt? The amount of money that we've wasted? Or all the wouldas, couldas, and shouldas? I could have been a better parent. I should have paid closer attention. I could have been a better student. Dig around in the broken down places of your life, and what do you find? You discover wasted years, obsessive greed, destructive diversions, racial slurs, anger, arrogance, selfishness. What can we do with all of these unwanted marks? Well, there are different things that people do in response. We can be defensive. When we're defensive, that means we're not going to admit anything. We tell no one. We keep the skeletons safely locked up in the closet. We're seeking to be declared innocent instead of forgiven. When we're defensive, we really reduce our life to one goal, and that is to hide the secret. To cover it up, to never address it, don't admit it, and whatever you do, don't ever confess it. When we see marks of regret, though, another option is we can be defeated. When we're defeated, we feel as though we don't make mistakes, we feel as if we are a mistake. We beat ourselves up repeatedly with blame and with shame. We take the role of judge and jury and accusing attorney, and the verdict is guilty now and forever. Defensive people hide those marks. Defeated people keep on replaying those marks. But is there a better way? You bet there is. We can be delivered from all of those ugly marks. As we begin Lent on this Ash Wednesday, we also begin a sermon series called Witnesses to Christ, People of the Passion. And the first person who helps us follow Christ to the cross in John's Gospel is not John the Gospel writer, but John the Baptist. What does John the Baptist say when we're defensive about sin or when we're defeated by our sin? Well, he says what he said in the Gospel reading this evening. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. When it comes to all of our ugly marks of sin, we can be delivered. Behold. Now, behold, if you're translating, it would probably mean see. But it's stronger than that. It's an emphatic exclamation. It's, hey, look at this. Here's the whole point of what I'm saying. John said it one day, and then the very next day he said it again. Behold, the Lamb of God. And this is no ordinary Lamb. This is the Passover Lamb of God. John uses the word Passover 11 times in his Gospel. The entire gospel is structured to help us to behold, to see, to take note of Christ, the Passover Lamb of God. In the book of Exodus, back in the Old Testament, we learn that the Passover Lamb is a one-year-old male lamb. It is a perfect, spotless specimen without defense. And the Israelites are instructed to place the blood of that Passover lamb on the sides and on the tops of their door frames. And that blood would set the Israelites free. They would be free from the slavery they suffered in Egypt. They would be free from Pharaoh forever. They would be free from the plague of death that was coming to the land. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world Notice that it is spoken in the present tense, meaning that Christ continues to take away our sin. Today, he takes it away. Tomorrow, he'll take it away. Next week, he will take it away. That includes every sin. Be it ugly, be it shameful or haunted, he takes it all away. Christ not only takes the guilt that belongs to us, he also takes away the shame that our 
sin marks us with. Now, guilt is what we feel when we've done wrong. Shame is what we feel when somebody recognizes what we've done wrong. And we all know what public shame feels like. Somebody is branded by a divorce, or marked by a handicap, or saddened with alcoholic parents, crushed because of a child's arrest, or we feel stigmatized because we lost our job, or we lost our spouse, or we lost our house or our life savings, and now everybody knows. But there's also private shame, and we've all felt that too. Maybe you have been pushed to the edge by an abusive spouse, or molested by an authority figure, or just teased without mercy by the other kids. Maybe nobody else can see it, but we know. And that's enough to bury us in shame. So you work hard. You want to wash that shame away. And so you either throw yourself into something constructive, or you throw yourself into something that you hope will make you forget your shame. But nothing erases our shame, and nothing takes away our guilt. Sin has marked us, and that's that, and that's the end of the story, except that it's not. We don't have to drink away our sin. We don't have to work our sin away. We don't have to eat our sin away or explain or cry or bury our sins away because behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Most of us have carried our ugly marks for so long we can't even imagine life without them. But God can and he does. And God does more than just imagine it. He sends John the Baptist preaching repentance and saying, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The Passover Lamb of God does it all for the whole world, including you and me. And so we can always pray, Jesus, please take it all away. Take away what you did. Take away what you said, what you saw, what you took, how you feel. We can pray this prayer as often as we We can pray it without holding back. No guilt is too ancient. No guilt is too recent. No shame is too evil or too insignificant. No marks are so malicious they cannot be completely removed. Jesus, please take it all away. We're tempted to say, Jesus, you may not even want to talk to me. I'm so undeserving of your love. But we're God's baptized children. And he first loved us. And our seemingly indelible marks that we carry are removed only when they are exposed to his grace. And confession of sins is not punishment for sin. Confession simply names our sins so they can be exposed God's amazing grace. So be firm in that simple prayer. Jesus, please take this all away. Because Satan traffics in guilt and in shame. He won't give up without a fight. And so say to Satan, I left my sin with the Passover Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. It's time for a clean slate and a new beginning. That's what this Lenten season is all about. We don't need to be defensive. We don't need to be defeated. Today, we trust that we can be delivered. And we do that by looking at God's marks. Behold, when he spoke to the prophet Isaiah, God said, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. And Jesus as your name written where he can see it. And Jesus loves you so much that your name is written on his blood-stained hands. If you've ever wondered how God reacts when guilt and shame have you cornered, if you've ever wondered how God feels when you're lost and helpless, then frame those words and hang them on your wall. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world 
Trust those words and trust Jesus to take it all away. Because Jesus took the nails on a God-forsaken cross. He hung there for us. And taking those nails, Jesus takes away all of our sin and shame, and he continues to say, I have you engraved on the palms of my hands. In the end, those are the only marks that matter. These marks on Christ's hands will never be erased because they remain there for you by the grace of Jesus. Amen. Congregation, please stand as we pray the prayer of the church.
cleansed hearts, we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
we stand as we sing the note to this. Six, I lay my sins on. 